grass bends with a hiss. A tall shadow strides the seam, where light and seed heads shimmer. The head stays high, the steps are measured. Then a snap of motion explodes below. Coils rise, hood flares, and the shadow answers with a piston strike that lands and lifts before the eye can follow. Another lands, faster, sharper, precision stacked on reach. Dust hangs and the coils buckle. This is a raptor stomping prey in open daylight, a bird of prey on foot that turns legs into weapons. In a landscape ruled by wings, the raptor that hunts on foot writes its own physics with every kick. Savannah stretches to thorny horizons, dotted with termite mounds and zebra grass. A pair patrols together, ranging miles in a morning, reading faint flickers of movement rather than scent. Nests rise in flat-topped acacias. Chicks pace the branches long before they test the ground. The hunters eat many things, lizards, rodents, insects, but the signature quarry is scaled and fast. Long legs carry the body above trouble. A crest of quills shadows the face. Toes end in blunt, hard nails built more for impact than grip. Only when the pattern resolves does the name lock in. The secretary bird, an African bird predator that chooses the earth over the air. Secretary bird. Stomp. The raptor that hunts on foot names the edge and the strategy. Secretary bird behavior tuned to a running life and a striking finish. Here is the paradox, stated plain. How do secretary birds generate such force and accuracy with each strike while avoiding venomous bites? In secretary bird snake hunting, the clock runs in milliseconds. The leg lifts high. The intertarsal joint folds like a spring, then snaps straight, driving a focused blow with the foot's hard edge. Field and lab work show impacts delivered in a blink, shorter than a human reaction time, with forces scaled to body weight that can stun or break small vertebrae. Yet the head remains distant, the body out of range of a defensive lunge, Accuracy is surgical. Strikes land on the skull or neck, and when the target darts, a lateral feint buys the next opening. The birds often mantle their wings, not for flight, but as decoys and shields, drawing attention from legs while enlarging their profile. The result is a sequence that looks impossible to explain until the parts assemble. High reach, fast downward acceleration, and instant recoil, repeated until the snake slows. Then a pin and a beak stab end the line. Three explanations lead. First, spring and strut biomechanics. Long tibiotarsi and a tall intertarsal joint act like levers. Tendons store elastic energy on the upswing and release it on the downstroke. A stiff ankle region redirects that energy into the foot with minimal loss, so less muscle makes more speed. The trade-off is delicacy. Thin lower legs would seem vulnerable. Armor solves part of that. Dense scales, a keratinized sole, and blunt nails spread impact and resist puncture. In open grass, the design shines. In broken thorn scrub, missteps can cost. Second, predictive targeting and sensory control. Eyes set high, scan for the head, not the whole snake. Once a strike begins, the bird commits along a path shaped by the last visible motion, then corrects on the rebound. Secretary bird behavior reveals short bursts of micro steps that herd the snake into shallow S-curves, reducing lateral speed before the decisive stomp. Neural timing must be tight, 
Evidence suggests response windows under a tenth of a second. The limit is clutter. Tall grass hides coils and can draw a misplaced blow. Third, risk management by distance and deception. Wings flare to one side. The bird leans the other, selling a target that is not the real danger. When the snake lunges at the wing, the leg is already moving, and the foot arrives where the head will be, not where it is. A second leg hovers, ready to parry or follow. African bird predator tactics here look like fencing, feint, draw, counter, run by a bird of prey on foot, whose reach turns venom's range into a smaller circle. Scientists still debate how much individual learning refines this choreography, and nobody knows why some birds show extreme boldness while neighbors act cautious with the same species of snake. Mechanics meet life history. Long daily patrols keep muscles ready for sudden power. Long legs translate stride into coverage, flushing prey that crouch rather than flee. When quarry is not a snake, the same strike dispatches rodents and hares. When the target is armored, repeated blows crack the shell's seams. Raptor stomping prey is not a party trick. It's a general solution to hard problems on the ground. The beak follows only when the legs have done their work, a clean division of labor that keeps eyes and brain out of the danger zone. The strategy has edges. Heat steals precision. Thorn and stone steal footing. A misjudged kick can catch empty air and invite a counter. Even so, secretary bird snake hunting persists because it's elastic. If a cobra stands, the bird circles to tire it. If a mamba runs, the bird sprints and pins the body mid-line before working forward. When cover grows tall, the pair widens its spacing so one flushes and the other finishes. Secretary bird behavior rewrites what we thought we knew about raptors by making the ground, not the sky, the axis of power. Light hardens, grass whispers. The long legs fold, unfold, and fold again, precise as metronomes. The coils slacken, the head falls still. A crest flicks once, then the hunter lifts its prize and strides on. Can a bird's feet be deadlier than its beak? The ledger on these planes says yes. Secretary Bird. Stomp. The raptor that hunts on foot endures as long as open ground. Keen eyes and legs built for impact share the same horizon. If grass grows higher, if fields fragment, if prey patterns change, the kicks may land less often, and certainty may look vanished. For now, the strike holds, and an African bird predator walks the line where patience meets a footfall you never see in time.